Welcome to the Heathen Coalition. I'm your host Dawn and today I'm going to be talking to you all about mugwort. Folk names for mugwort include felon herb and sailor's tobacco. Some people believe that Old English motherwort might be another name for mugwort. So this would be the mother of all herbs. It has long been used for dreams or to enhance dream recall. The scent is potent and I would highly recommend this as one of my top 10 magic herbs of all time. Because of the significance regarding the god Woden as well as just folk beliefs Chinese mugwort is used in the moxibustion process, which involves slowly burning cones of mugwort. Mugwort is considered the ideal herb that encourages the flow of qi throughout the body. Baifus is a German term for mugwort that literally means by the foot. They would wrap mugwort around their ankle or put it in their shoe in olden times to banish fatigue and for general protection. Mugwort is in the daisy family. Figuring out what plant family mugwort belonged to was actually very confusing because I was looking up mugwort in multiple dictionaries. One would say it's in the daisy family or another the asteraceae, sunflower family, thistle family, and it turns out there's just a lot of different names for this one plant family and that's why it's so confusing because it's one of the largest plant families out there. Artemisia is a genus of plants within Asteraceae, comprised of a few hundred different plants, including sagebrush, used for smudging by Native Americans. In tribes where they didn't have or use white sage, they would sometimes use sagebrush, which was a type of Artemisia as well. In the genus itself, Artemisia is named after the Greek goddess of the moon. There's many different kinds of Artemisia, such as Tarragon is Artemisia dracunculus. Plant names can get a little confusing because mugwort, for instance, could refer to several different plants, but then you'll have a plant that is the most commonly referenced as mugwort in Europe, which is Artemisia vulgaris. And the vulgaris part simply means common. Sort of like how if you look up the word heathen in a lot of dictionaries, you'll see a synonym of vulgar. And this means common because the heathens were the common folk. So in the same sense, mugwort is common. It is Artemisia vulgaris, a vulgar display of magic power. The word mugwort is believed to be derived from a connotation of a mug. Before hops was used to flavor beer, mugwort was the herb of choice. But some of my dictionaries mention that Anglo-Saxon muckwort could refer to a midge or a fly instead of a mug. So another theory is that the word mugwort comes from being a bug repellent as well. And a third theory that I've seen online is that mugwort might come from Old Norse muggy, which means marsh. Mugwort is a Eurasian perennial herb that is related to wormwood but a lot of people think it is wormwood. Mugwort is Artemisia vulgaris, and wormwood is Artemisia absinthium. And wormwood was also used to make vermouth, which actually comes from the German wormut, meaning wormwood. So that's in a lot of things like Manhattans or martinis. This wormwood is different than mugwort. One folktale in Glasgow tells of how a young woman died of consumption, and as her body was being carried past the port, a beautiful mermaid emerged from the water and said, If they would drink nettles in March and eat muggins in May, so many bra maidens would negang to the clay. There are a few folk tales like this where mermaids are recommending the use of mugwort for medicinal purposes, and of course the mermaid's advice worked. Mugwort is mermaid approved, and this is pretty fascinating. I just discovered this little tidbit of folklore and I died. I love it because I love mermaids, and if I could be a mythological creature, I would identify as a mermaid. So this mermaid is basically recommending the folk to eat mugwort in May. That's good. Mm. So I've been eating it all May, of course, because this is what mermaids do. But <clears throat> I'm not a doctor, so I can't recommend non-mer folk to do the same. But people do often drink mugwort tea to enhance dreams. 
Wow, it's a potent minty flavor. In the Iron Age grave of the Druid of Colchester, a cup was found with traces of mugwort in it, so pagans drinking mugwort tea seems to be nothing new. Mugwort is commonly associated with midsummer because it's also known as Sonnenwend girdle or a girdle of the summer solstice. A common practice in Germany would be to fashion a type of wreath. The stem doesn't bend very easily, but I'm sure if you broke this down into two pieces and bent it that way and tied it, you could easily create your own sun and wind girdle. I just don't think that St. John was the first one to wear a girdle of mugwort, which is probably why it has another name, sun and wind girdle, not just Johannes girdle. And we know that St. John's Eve, it has been used to appropriate a lot of midsummer festivities. So basically, I think it went from being known as midsummer's girdle to Johannes girdle or John's girdle. Because interestingly, we have St. John's wort, that a lot of people have heard of that herb, but there's also mugwort, and one of the folk names for mugwort is St. John's herb. So it's different than St. John's wort, but it's sometimes called St. John's plant. Why would that be? Probably because St. John was replacing other folk names that may have included pagan deities for the ethnoflora of the regions of Europe. In Austria, the midsummer fires were known as Sonnenwendfeuer, or summer solstice fire, as well as Johannsfeuer. Clearly, this tradition has a lot more to do with celebrating the summer solstice than St. John. And if the heathen need fire was appropriated over time into St. John's fires, then it is probable that the cultural significance of the plants that they were throwing into these fires was also supplanted. As I mentioned a little bit, the Lacnunga manuscript of the 10th century, which mentions Woden, talks about how mugwort, well, it's actually the first plant that is mentioned. I think it is significant of the list of nine glory twigs that Woden snatched up. Mugwort is called the oldest. It's the first mentioned and the oldest, where it says, Remember, mugwort, what you revealed. Because a lot of herbal charms and chants had to do with guiding the healing process and actually talking to the plant itself. Lithuania is one of those places where paganism is still going strong, and it's good to see, such as the Raza, or Dew Festival. Around the solstice in Lithuania, they make cupoles, which embody the spirit of the growing season between May and July. So they cover these poles with healing plants and herbs and use them to bestow blessings. Jacob Grimm mentions in Teutonic mythology how in Prussia and Lithuania, on Midsummer Eve, they used to fashion large burrs and mugwort, that is to say, cupoles, over the gate or gap through which the cattle always pass. And it's not to say that cupoles nowadays always include mugwort, but I found it intriguing how he specifically mentioned mugwort in relation to this custom. If you'd like to learn more about mugwort, I uh, have a lot of it I've been harvesting, and you can get some at my Etsy shop, the Brazilian Boutique. I'm making mugwort soap, which comes with a folklore fact sheet all about mugwort, and I'm considering doing a whole series now about plants that will talk about my personal favorites, flowers I'd recommend to put in a witch's garden, stuff like that, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful midsummer. Don't forget to make your wreath of mugwort this year and throw it into the fire for good luck. Thor ward you well. Shit, shit.